In Kalimantan, people have a special relationship with the hornbills. And you can see the hornbill symbol everywhere. I'm in front of the Catholic Church in Bukit Kulam Sintang, where they also use the rhinoceros hornbill as their symbol. This is a good example to show the bonding between the people and the hornbills. Deep in the heart of Indonesian Borneo, Dayak people have made their home for generations. Gathered in longhouse communities, families have long shared stories of hornbills, birds that hold a special place in their culture. Not long ago, members of this community were hunters of these magnificent birds. Today, they are their protectors, understanding that the fate of the hornbill is bound to the fate of their forest home. I am Yoki Hadi Prakarsa, conservation biologist and hornbill researcher. And I have come to this Dayap community forest with wildlife photographer Tim Lemon to witness one of nature's most remarkable relationships. This forest holds one of Borneo's last great concentrations of hornbills, a refuge where the farmers of the forest still thrive. So does the road cut through the national park? No, 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 side? the other side. I think the national park is, you can see there's a yeah, mountain yeah, or hill, yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, on that side. Within the fragmented expanse of the world's third largest rainforest, hornbills face uncertain futures from habitat loss and illegal hunting. But this forest near the Dayak village is part of an island of hope in the heart of Borneo, a vast, intact landscape surrounded by a sea of deforestation. This forest is home to eight hornbill species. The wreath, the black, the oriental pied, the bushy crested, the rhinoceros, the endangered wrinkle and white crown, and one particularly close to my heart the critically endangered helmeted hornbill. Each of these hornbills is well adapted to live among the towering trees. Their powerful beaks and keen eyes evolve to harvest the forest's bounty and in doing so, ensure its future. Hornbills need this kind of huge tree for nesting, right? Absolutely. These trees alone, roughly more than one meter diameter, yeah. so which is now it's become rare in, in in the forest. So this is very important to protect these healthy big trees. This forest provides everything hornbills need to survive. The massive trees that have stood for centuries offer a perfect nesting cavities, while the diverse canopy provides an abundant feast of fruits. Here, hornbills are thriving. During our time in this forest, we encounter active nests of two of the species. The bushy crested hornbill, smaller and more social, move through the meat canopy in family groups, bringing food to the female and chicks inside nest cavity. It's a rhinoceros hornbill call in the distance. And we also encountered a giant of the forest, rhinoceros hornbill. Its name comes from the huge orange and red cast on the top of its head that amplifies its call in this dense forest. Like all of Indonesia's hornbill species, the female seals herself inside a nest cavity high in the canopy. For months, the male must provide all the food. While hornbills are mostly fruit eaters, 
Growing chicks need a protein-rich diet of insects and other small animals. Hornbills are the most spectacular birds of the Indonesian lowland rainforest. They're big, they're charismatic, they're loud when they fly. They're a great kind of ambassador for the rainforest. And also, they're just really important for the forest because of their role as seed dispersal agents, as farmers of the forest. Every day throughout the year, hornbills are feeding on fruits and, and dropping the seeds around the forest. If you want to restore the forest, the human doesn't need to do anything, just keep the hornbills leaf. Right, and you just need to have some healthy exactly. forest nearby. Exactly. A source exactly. of seeds. Look at this, Yoki, we got a hornbill garden. Look, there's so many, there's so many seeds yeah. here. These are all from the hornbill tossing out the seeds. According to research, the survival rate of seeds from hornbill diet is nearly 80%. Over millennia, hornbill ancestors migrated across ancient landmasses and scattered islands. Rival on new lands led to new species. Today, Indonesia is home to 13. Three of them found nowhere else. One species, the Papuan hornbill, is the result of an extraordinary journey. Island by island, generation by generation, they cross the treacherous seas until they reach the forest of Papua. Now, we are making our own voyage to the land of Papua. We are following stories about a phenomenon neither of us has witnessed. Dozens of hornbills gathering to roost at nightfall. If the stories are true, and if luck is on our side, we might witness something extraordinary. It's about 5.30 right now. We just arrived in the area of Yum Island. We're hoping that some hornbills are gonna come to roost on this island. We're gonna wait and see. Today's kind of our first day, our scouting day. We're gonna try to see what's going on here. We don't see any birds yet. If they don't come at night, they won't be there in the morning. So, Yeah, yeah. Jadi dia gini, dia begini. Flying across? Okay, they're turning, they're turning yeah. over yeah. the island. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh. That is another group, another, another group, group oh, yeah, is yeah. coming. Another group coming. It's yep, I see them. One, two. All right, I'm gonna try to track these guys. It's one, there's, two. Oh, there's six. Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, there's a bunch more landing from the other side, about, oh, about six or eight. I couldn't, I, they just came in so fast, I couldn't count. Oh, these guys are going lower. They're going to a different tree. I can Okay, okay, don't yell so <laughs> There's one up high. On high and another down, down here, down here. Wow. Uh-oh, and more coming in from the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Another eight. A how, group many of up, how many are we up to now? We're... He's very loud. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. At the beginning, to be honest, we are a bit pessimistic with that information. But now we are so happy. Right after sunset, they're just coming in, coming in. 60, I don't know, 60 or more. We lost track. They're coming in too fast. Have you ever seen this many hornbills in one time? Ah, uh, no. No, uh, first I... time. It's the first time for me. Oh, another two, right? Is that? What's that? They're going the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably. They lost hornbills. Hey, it's over there. <laughs> the people of nearby Yan Sawai village have lived in harmony with these lands and seas for generations. They understand that their well-being is connected to the health of the forest. 
including the hornbills that live there. To them, these magnificent birds are more than neighbors. They are partners in the cycles of renewals that provide food, materials, and water. Word reaches us of an even more spectacular gathering on another island nearby. Locals tell us the hornbills come in numbers beyond counting. The eye island rises from the turquoise water like a green jewel. Surrounded by the towering hills, it creates a natural amphitheater where we hope to see the hornbills perform the nightly ritual. It's amazing. What a beautiful evening. And because this island is surrounded by taller, bigger hills, the birds are just dropping in, circling down like raptors. I've never seen hornbills doing that before, but they have to lose a lot of altitude, so they're just like coming. Super cool. Many birds gather in a bush to avoid predators, but adult hornbills don't have many predators here in Papua. It seems like these nightly gatherings are social, a place for pair bonding or finding a mate. How many do we have? Oh shoot, 123 hornbills at this tiny island. That's crazy. To see large number of hornbills flocking in the roosting tree is quite rare. In one spot, in one island, that's amazing. This extraordinary abundance is possible because of where we are. Inside an intact landscape stewarded by local communities, regional governments, and civil society. Here, local leaders understand that protecting Papua natures protects their communities. They are committed to keeping 70% of land as forest to provide clean water, stable climate, and the resources essential for survival. For the hornbills, the vast networks of fruiting trees provide abundant food, while towering giants offer nesting sites. This is what a healthy forest ecosystem looks like where hornbills can flourish in numbers not seen elsewhere in the world's third largest rainforest. In the voyage of the hornbills at sunset, we witness the heartbeat of a living forest. Their gathering is more than a spectacle. It is proof that when forests are protected, when communities care for their natural heritage, nature responds with abundance. The hornbills have taught us a timeless truth. When nature thrives, we all thrive. This is by far the, the largest congregation of hornbills in one location, in one spot. It's a great indication of the healthy forest here, right? Exactly. This is another good example. 
healthy hornbills, healthy forest, and healthy people. <laughs> wow. Oh, I got, there's two more coming in from the right. Thank you.